Welcome to the Cincy Corner, the place where sports betting meets Ohio sports, presented by the U.S. Gambler and by Betfred Sportsbook. And Betfred provides the most personalized betting experience on the market, from in-person events with betting competitions, weekly promotional offers that fit your betting size and patterns, as well as the personal touch you won't get anywhere else. Betfred gives you more. Hello, I'm your host, the Bengals genius. Been a Bengal fan for 41 years. Was this close last year to winning that Super Bowl. And we got the Cincinnati corner going with my main man, my co-host, Kyle Hunter. What's up, friend? Tell us about yourself. Man, it's great to chat with you here. I'm looking forward here to talking a lot about Cincinnati and the state of Ohio. Uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll give you guys a quick background of myself. You know, I was a uh, finance guy. I got into sports betting, sports handicapping. I've always been a massive sports fan, always been a Buckeyes and Bengals fan uh, my whole life. Uh, for a long time, being a Bengals fan was something uh, uh, through school, you know, I got picked on for being a Bengals fan, things like that. But now the Bengals are pretty fun to root for. Uh, I know both of us have been Bengals fans all the way through it, whether it was the terrible years or, or the good years. Uh, hate those bandwagon fans. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, my my full time job is sports and sports uh, betting, handicapping. So uh, I won Handicapper of the Decade here a couple of years ago. Uh, I have had some really nice awards, and I hope I can uh, help everybody with handicapping these games in a, a positive way, and we can kind of mix in the sports talk with the sports betting. I think this should be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. So just a little quick question for you. Obviously, with the picks, there's always pressure, you know, like as a guy who, how do you, how do you manage that? You know, like, oh, my God, it's a lock. You know what I mean? Because there's no such thing as a lock. Everybody knows that, right? So do you ever feel pressure with that? You know, I've gotten better about that over time. You know, when I first kind of broke into the industry, I was kind of the young gun getting into this. And I, I was on fire to start. And then the first time you get your uh, cold slump, everybody's like, you know, what, what is going on? I thought you were good. You know, this is, And it's going to happen to everybody. Uh, I hate the word lock. Uh, I'm never going to use the word lock. So it's like... Uh, it's a it's out of my vocabulary, but uh, I would say the biggest thing for me is I just understand the process now that, you know, if you if you hit 55 or 56 percent, you're really good at this long term. So I just try to grind out these profits by having small edges a little bit at a time. And I, I hope that I can help uh, our, our viewers and listeners as we go. Uh, to be able to uh, kind of handicap these games better by uh, kind of looking at the kind of information that I have and and we can kind of just discuss our way through these. But yeah, I mean, you do feel pressure. I mean, I feel more pressure when uh, somebody else is getting the pick and betting on it than when I do for myself. You know, I, I'm able to take losses easier myself than I do uh, if I know it's for somebody else. Yeah, because my kid's lunch account is pretty low right now, man. So I'm kind of... Oh, gosh. <laughs> But uh, well, how many how many games would you say you bet on a week? Oh, it depends on what sport. But when it comes to football, uh, college, I would say an average week for me is probably about seven or eight uh, plays and NFL is probably about three or four. So when I broke into the industry, I'll tell you, um, I would have maybe 15 plays a week in college football. And everybody used to say, oh, there's no way you can be any good picking 15 games. You know, some of the, the old heads in the industry didn't like that. You know, they wanted uh, to say, oh, that you should have one or two plays and that's your best bet and that's it, you know. And uh, when I played that many games, people didn't like it. Uh, the only negative about playing quite a few games is there's more variance and the, the ups and downs will be more extreme. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think that there's – uh, any rule that you should have to only have one or two plays, especially when, you know, there's a ton of college teams out there. So it's not like the NFL where there's only uh, so many teams, but in the NFL, uh, the edges are a little bit smaller, harder to find. So usually you have about three or four a week in the NFL. So how'd you do last weekend? Last weekend? Let's see. I went uh, two, two and one, I think last weekend. So split right down the middle. Uh, I will say going into last weekend, I had won my last eight. So, you know, I had to have a, uh, uh, come yeah. down at some point, but, but, you know, I, I can handle that. It was all right. Uh, it was a mixed bag weekend. Uh, I had a couple of handicaps that were pretty good that probably should have won. And then I had a, uh, Georgia 
uh, Georgia and Oregon under, which should have lost, honestly, which ended up being a tie. I don't know if you remember at the end of that game, they didn't score anything for like the last 13 minutes. Georgia finally let off after they were just killing Oregon in that game. But, uh, you know, it's it's a real grind and you're going to have back and forth in this. And I, I'm better at understanding that now. Now, I do have people who bet my games who don't understand this. And trust me, I get some I get some emails that are, that are pretty testy, but. But, uh, you know, I've gotten better at handling those over time. Do you avoid preseason games? Because I'm a sucker for the action sometimes. And I got a little fired up a couple weeks ago and bet on a Bengal preseason game and, and lost on that one. Do you ever bet preseason or you stay, that, stay away from that? I very rarely bet preseason. I know some people who are good at preseason. Uh, you know, that's that's a spot where you want to know motivation. You know, who cares more than the other team? Who's going to play the starters more than the other team? Uh, you know this, but uh, the Ravens care about the preseason more than anybody else. I mean, the Ravens never lose in the preseason. So, what was the been, record this year? Uh, I I'm not sure offhand. I, I don't think they lost. I, I think that the Ravens have had a heck of a streak going, and then uh, you know, people who've been betting on the Ravens have gotten pretty rich. <laughs> no doubt about it, man. But I'm but finally regular season starts. I can't. I cannot wait. Obviously. So the Bengals are playing the Steelers Sunday. First time in Bengal history that they're going to open up against the Steelers. What, what are you expecting to see that game? Man, I got to tell you, this is this is a exciting first game. You know, Bengal Steelers is. Uh, I know the Steelers and Browns are rivals, but the Bengals and Steelers are rivals now as well. I mean, this is not it. There's no love lost between these two teams. The Bengals. Uh, minus six and a half here against the Steelers with a total of 44 and a half. Uh, this line, as far as, you know, what expectations are coming into this season, there's a couple of things that kind of stand out to me. Um, first, I want to say that the AFC North battles have been very physical battles in the past. They've been a lot of low scoring games uh, dating back to 2004, 76 and 53 to the under. Uh, with a total of 41 or higher. So this one fits because it's 44 and a half. They've been a lot of low scoring games. I do think the Steelers defense will be a good defense this year. I think they'll get a lot of pressure on opposing quarterbacks. So right away, my first thought is this is going to be a test for the Bengals new offensive line, right? You know, I'm excited to see how the new offensive line looks uh, as as all of us were, we were frustrated uh, in the Super Bowl when Burrow was getting hit immediately. Honestly, I kind of hate even talking about that at this point. But, uh, you know, I'm hoping that we see the positive um, already. I think some people say, well, it's going to take quite a bit of time because there's so many new guys. I don't know. What's your what's your feeling about the offensive line here against the, the Steelers this week? On, on paper, it looks great. There's so many games last year where – I'm just I'm mentally conditioned to see the minute Joe Burrow snaps the ball, he's, he's getting killed, you know, seven, he was sacked 70 times at the end of when it was all said and done by the end of the year last year, which is this ridiculous amount of sacks. So everyone they brought in on paper looks great. It should all fit, but I'm so used to seeing preseason where you can see these guys work together. And since we haven't seen that at all, it's going to be uh, interesting, man, but there's, it's definitely a hundred percent upgrades across the board though. So I'm, ex I'm excited to see that. Uh, so it'll be a, a great test throughout the bat with DJ Watt, Cameron Haywood. Uh, and the guy I'm so excited to see is Volson. I think, I think he is guys they've had there in the past. It, it just, I don't understand what the problem is there with, when it regards to the front office. I don't know if it's a scouting issue. Cause I know Pollock is a, is a great offensive line coach, but Something seems to be wrong with the because even uh, Jackson Carmen hasn't quite developed yet. You know, and we keep, you know, usually it seems like teams get these guys that are late round picks and they can groom them up pretty good. Man, we've went through a ton of guys, you know, who do you That's, think? Who do you think to blame for that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think that's difficult. I, I I agree with you on Jackson Carmen. I mean, because you would expect he'd be a strength coming into this season, but just about everybody I talk to think he's about the biggest question mark on the line going into this season. You know, I think the Bengals have had a hard time uh, with depth on the offensive line as well. They've had some injuries. And as soon as somebody gets injured, you know, you have uh, Prince in there starting or something like that. Uh, you know, it's just not a great situation for an NFL team that's competing 
to have somebody getting burnt around the edge constantly when Joe Burrow is, you know, I mean, he, we need him to stay healthy more than anything, obviously. So uh, yeah. uh, that for me, the other thing I want to say about this game, uh, you know, is I think the Bengals defense, we, we need to talk about them a little bit. The Bengals defense They've been underrated by a lot of people oh, big for, time. for the past year. I mean, we heard about the Bengals defense. Uh, so many people told me last year, the Bengals defense is going to regress. They're not this good. There's no way they're this good. Look, the Bengals defense played amazing all the way through the playoffs. They were tremendous. And I, I think Logan Wilson's a star at linebacker for sure. And the secondary, uh, people like to pick on Apple. He's not the best of the bunch, but I, I think the secondary is pretty solid in general. And in general, you know, I think the defensive line is solid as well. They've gotten better at pass rush. We're going to find out about them in this game too, uh, Bengals genius, because let me tell you, the Steelers offensive line is bad. They, they've got a really bad offensive line. So I think we could see some uh, Bengals getting in the backfield in this game. Oh, I'm excited to see. Is, is Osai clear to play now? I, I'm not sure on that one. I, I, I I've been dying to see that guy, you know what I mean, unleash him. That So we should have a huge pass rush and the guy that totally gets overlooked by everybody it seems like is dj reader i'd like to mm -hmm. get do more for pumping up that guy because he didn't get any i couldn't believe it he was like an eighth alternate for the pro bowl or something it was insulting you know and the guys that he's a house they just can't move him when he's in there so i'm expecting honestly I, i'm expecting of course it's, it's almost like my kid playing right you know what i mean you always had a few madden points to your kids score but I think the Bengals, I think the Joe Burrow effect's a real thing. And I just think that, you know, the way that they dominated, Mike Tom is such a great coach. I know that these guys are going to be prepared. You know, the Steelers will. But, it, I mean, I think that they are just going to come up fired up. And I think that Joe Burrow is going to establish that this isn't a fluke. This isn't like a why not us situation. It's like, hey, we're a dominant team. We own this division. It's our division now. And that's just is what it is. And, and with Mitch Trubisky, I think it's a, 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 another benefit for us that we are used to like defending like Lamar Jackson. Right. So he's more of a scrambling quarterback too. And just like Mitch is mobile, but we kind of designed the whole defense to stop that kind of quarterback, you know? So I'm, yeah. I'm expecting us to lock them down this week. And I personally, I'm expecting to smack him around a little bit, to be honest with you. The, the, the thing that it worries me a bit is the Bengals did, uh, smash them twice last year so the Steelers should come into this game ready uh, Tomlin is a good coach like you said uh, Tomlin hasn't had a worse than 500 record as a coach and I know going into this season their season win total suggests that most people think the Steelers will have a losing record this year partially because the AFC North is just stacked I mean there's some really good teams in the AFC North no easy win there uh, especially when Watson comes back for the Browns but you know this is a a division that I would think the Steelers would not have as much success as they've had in the past. However, you know, you could certainly argue that Big Ben being gone, it's actually an upgrade to Trubisky or Pickett or whoever ends up playing the most there for the Steelers. So in this game, I hate laying the six and a half points. I think this will be a close game. I like the Bengals to win this game outright. I just think six and a half might be a bit too much delay if you're betting on this game. All right. See, I'm going to lean towards the Bengal covering. Like I said, obviously I'm a, a little bit partial. I don't know if you can tell or not, but, but I, I just, I think they're going to, I think because of how the Steelers are and I know they're going to try to get even, I think that it'll be close. And then third, fourth quarter, we just pull away. That's what I'm, that's what I'm expecting so, to see. So, so you're either way, man. Bengals second half, if it's close in the, at halftime, then you take the Bengals to pull away in the second half. Then. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to play it. Be yeah, so, I, right. I, I just want to say real quick, even though I said I don't know that I'd lay the points with the Bengals, I am not betting on the Steelers no matter what. There's that, <laughs> you know, I am way too big of a Bengals fan and I, I hate the Steelers. So if we have any Steelers fans listening, I'm sorry, but I hate your team. That's a, that's a, uh, that's a team that I just cannot, uh, I can't bet on the Steelers. It's just uh, too much negativity there. And especially against the Bengals. Never betting that team. I would lean to the under thinking this could be a bit of a low scoring game, especially since those AFC North games have been. I think the Bengals defense will play well in this one. You know, what drives you nuts, too, about like uh, what, what you said about because the Bengals beat the Steelers the last two. Actually, it's three in a row now. Right. Mm -hmm. I can't even think the last time they had that stretch. But, you know, the, the Steelers dominated us so hard for so long. Yeah. 
that it's it's just our time is we're due <laughs> you know what i mean for a nice long beating Steelers season i think so that, that's what i'm pulling for <laughs> but uh also you're gonna uh what about what are you thinking about buffalo and the rams to kick off the season you know they always have a great standalone game on that thursday night to start off the season i, I again i think this is a, a tremendous game uh the, Buffalo is the favorite to win the Super Bowl this year. I think that makes sense. Buffalo has a really well-rounded team. And the way they lost in the playoffs last year had to really, I mean, they, they had to be really pissed off to finish the season. Uh, I think Buffalo comes into this season as a really dangerous team. Allen's a good player. They, they added some nice pieces in the offseason. Buffalo is the team I'd be concerned about in the AFC, certainly. And uh, the Rams... You know, what happens after winning the Super Bowl? Gosh, it sounds bad to just even have to say that. <laughs> you know, it was so yeah. close. But uh, Rams, after winning the Super Bowl, uh, I think the Rams are a good team. The Rams get this game at home. They don't have a great home field advantage. Um, yeah, I, I think Buffalo would be the team that I would expect to win this game. But, you know, they're favored by two or two and a half. Uh, total around 52. I think, I think there'll be points in this game. You know, I would, I would think that this could be an over type of game because I think both offenses probably have the advantage on the defenses, especially with uh, white being out with an injury right now for the bills. So uh, even though Ramsey's a really good corner for the Rams, uh, they don't really have great depth at the corner spot. So I would think there could be some decent amount of scoring in this one. It drives you nuts with Buffalo though. It's, it, it's a an odd situation that everyone just assumes as if the Chiefs, you know, that game, they were a game away from the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? They still would have had to play Cincinnati. So I I just don't – I've seen this before where a team has kind of been lingering around. It reminds me of the old Cleveland Browns. Do you remember them from the Bernie Kosar days? You know, it was like they were supposed to get there. They got close. They got close, but they never could push through. And, and that's kind of what I got. The, I feel there's so much, there's more hype and pressure on the bills this year than the Bengals because it's, everyone looks at the Bengals like they were a fluke, you know, and, but everyone's kind of lining up and thinking that the bills are going to just cru hit cruise control and go through the whole season. You know? Well, well, let me ask you real quick. Who do you think is the Bengals top competition in the AFC? So if, if you think the bills may not be the team, then what do you think? Chiefs, Ravens? I mean, who do you Baltimore. Think? Baltimore, okay. them yeah. guys, man, they're studs, you know, and Harbaugh's great. And they, they got a huge, you know what I mean? They are got a huge chip on their shoulder yeah. now, you know, and I think they're, they're a great team. So I think they're going to be our, our main competition to, to get there, to get, yeah. to get back through it. Hard to argue with that, especially since they had so many injuries last year. And then now they should be a lot healthier than they were last year. I, I think they will be a very good team. And Harbaugh's a great coach, certainly. Yeah, and it, it's it, it's crazy to see Joe kind of tug on their cape a little bit. If you know what I mean? Like when he's, you know, after that game where he threw, put up over 500 yards mm -hmm. last year. So that uh, that's the game where it's going to be a bloodbath. So that's going to be a slugfest. And if the Bengals were going to lose about four or five games this year was what, what I'm expecting. I think they, they might get one of those Baltimore, but I don't know. But what about our old pals, uh, the Brownies? What are you expecting them in the, in the big uh, Mayfield bowl? I was going to say, so this is the Baker Mayfield game, right? I mean, uh, and bet Fred has this one at Panthers minus one and a half. Uh, you know, I, I think it, it makes sense that the Panthers would be a small favorite here. But, you know, the, if you look at the tickets, I mean, a lot of people have been betting the Panthers almost like, uh, you know, it's free money or something. I, 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 the Browns are still a pretty good team. I mean, they, they have a good defense. Uh, Brissett is not a terrible quarterback. I'm not saying he's Deshaun Watson, but I don't, I don't know that this is a free win for the Panthers as much as some people think. And I don't know your opinion on this because we haven't talked about this before, but I, I'm kind of curious what you think of Baker Mayfield. I mean, I don't I, Baker Mayfield is not that good. He's not near as good as he thinks he is. That's for sure. Um, you know, he's capable at times, but he's inconsistent. What's your take on Mayfield? Yeah. Well, that's the weirdest thing. I, I can see Baker Mayfield. I see him in all these games. He's inconsistent. And then for some reason, when I watch him against the Bengals, he's the greatest quarterback <laughs> of all time, you know? So he's got it in him. 
you know, there's something about him though, that seems to turn off the teammates and the area, you know, cause there was a lot of guys that he rubbed the wrong way and for a number one pick to get shipped out of town after they won a playoff game, you know, that was, that's, cr- that's kind of crazy. You know, if you think about the Browns history, but I think they're one of the dumbest organizations around at this point. I mean, the moves they're making don't make any sense, you know, I, I, I don't know. So, but, but make Baker Mayfield, you know, he's got those ups and downs. If he could just get more consistent for whatever he's, you know, I think that his emotions get the best of him sometimes and he kind of can beat himself. I think he's his own worst enemy, but in the, a game, like a scenario, like against Cleveland, you know, and with Christian McCaffrey coming back and what I read about him was interesting is that this whole off season he's been, cause I took him in fantasy is that he's really was going hardcore and pool training all underwater training for rehab. So I'm hope you know, he's only 26 years old. So, and he's usually had pretty good seasons when there's a decent quarterback around him. And I think with him and Baker, I think they could get hyped up a little bit. I think they could make the playoffs, the Panthers. I don't know. I don't know. That that could be that could be a tough ask for them. I, I maybe their upside is that. I don't I wouldn't want to bet on that. So I, I don't know. I don't think I trust Mayfield enough for that. I, I've seen too many terrible interceptions and inconsistency from him. I, I think he could have a great game and get too excited and then the next game throw three picks. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But in this game, uh, he could look really good. He should be really up for this game. I'm not going to bet on Panthers and Browns personally. Oh, there was a cycle I've seen, and I, it was somewhere on Twitter or whatever. They did the, the Baker cycle. You know what I mean? He gets, you know, he's disrespected, does well, and, you know, then falls apart the next week. Then he's back to disrespected and around and around it goes. So that yeah. seems where the merry-go-round goes with him. But I heard you mention something the other day, and I wanted to pick your brain about this. You said something earlier in the week when we were talking about the underdogs in week one of the NFL season. Yeah, well, there's there's a great trend here for week one, and, and it's underdogs, but they had to have been a team that didn't have much success last year. So it can't be a team that's an underdog that was a really good team last year. The trend goes like this. It's an underdog that also won six games or less in the previous season. And you're talking in game one only. Those teams are 82 and 53 against the spread. That's 61%. And that dates back to 2005. So let me just tell you, so everybody uh, listening can hear who the teams are that would fit for that this week real quick. Uh, The Texans, the Bears, the Lions, the Jaguars, the Jets and the Giants. So uh, I will say right away, you're not going to be excited to bet any of these teams. Who's excited to bet the Bears? Who's excited to bet the Jets? You know, games like that. Uh, Long term, it's been a good trend. And I'm not necessarily saying I think everybody listening should just bet all those teams, but it's certainly something to keep in mind. Uh, you know, Bengals Genius, I think the reason I would say that this has been a successful uh, thing in the past years is in, in game one, everybody thinks they still have a chance. Right. So the teams that were terrible last year, their fan base is fired up. They're fired up. We can do this. You see some upsets in in game one. You get to about game three or four and people realize that our team's not very good. You know, it's going to be a long season. So game one, uh, the underdog angle with a bad team from the year before, I do think that's a good predictive trend going forward. Oh, that's sweet, man, because I had the Lions. The Lions are one of my picks. For the week and they fit right. that they fit that profile at three and a half points i like that you know because i could see them is that that's right correct they're, they're getting three and a half yeah i've seen i've seen this one split three and a half or four so depending on where you're looking uh i this one may go to four i would think well honestly. if i know the mighty lions man them adorable rascals they, they usually lose by a field goal that should keep the fans <laughs> going in for a few more weeks <laughs> yeah that's uh I mean, everybody's going to bet the Eagles here. So the public is going to bet the Eagles. Uh, I think you, I think you want to get four in this one because I think it, it's going to be coming. All right. I like that. What's another team you like for uh, week one? So i I'd be honest, I'm not done with my NFL handicapping for week one. Uh, but, you know, I, I think the Texans are probably a decent play here for week one. I see the lines move down. I hate that. You know, it was eight now down to seven, a lot of places. 
Uh, Texans, are we really sure the Colts are amazing right away? I, I think the Colts are a pretty good team, but I mean, let's not make it sound like Matt Ryan is Joe Burrow or something. You know, I mean, this is a, you know, he, he is still kind of at least a, a washed up quarterback. You think he's washed up that bad, huh? Well, I'm not saying he's bad. I guess that washed up's a little bit harsh, but he has really good weapons around him. So he'll look better than what he is. He's had, uh, you know, a bad offensive line in Atlanta. He's in a much better spot with a good offensive line and good weapons around him. I just don't know that it's going to be amazing right away. I think, you know, if you're going to lay more than a touchdown on the road against a divisional opponent, that's not something I'd be very comfortable with. Yeah, so you're, so you're leaning towards the Texans then, huh? I'm leaning toward the Texans. Not, I'm not saying they're going to win. I'm right. saying I think that could be a close game. You think Jonathan Taylor will be able to produce like he did last year? Uh, I'm not going to bet against Jonathan Taylor. I think he's a tremendous running back, you know, uh, and and it, behind that offensive line, I think he'll be very good. Uh, so, I mean, by the end of the season, I think the Colts will be a good team uh, right away. I, I'm, not, I'm just not sure that they should be laying over a touchdown against anybody. What would you think about the uh, 49ers-Bears game? Well, this is a tough one. I, I think I like the under if I was going to bet the game. Uh, you know, this this game has been bet down as far as the under about 40 and a half or 41. Um, yeah, to me, the the Bears are, are a mess. I, I To be honest with you, I, I'm a Buckeyes fan, obviously, so I, I want Justin Fields to do well. I think Justin Fields is in a terrible situation. I mean, he's set up to fail here. He's got a terrible offensive line. Who are the weapons around him? I mean, who would be successful – with the offense that he has and, and from the opposite side, the 49ers, I mean, I, I, I guess it's going to be Lance with Garoppolo backing him up, but uh, you know, he's set up to succeed. They have tremendous weapons there. You would think a quarterback would look really good there. And uh, you know, San Francisco is a team that I've heard a decent amount of people saying could be a Super Bowl contender. You know, some people betting on them to win the Super Bowl here this year. So I don't know if you're as high on them, but uh you know, I wouldn't want to bet on the Bears. I'd be I'd be afraid to take the points there. All right. What about the cards plus five and a half? Cards plus five and a half. You know, so we know you were talking about the cycle of Baker Mayfield. So there's kind of a cycle of Cliff Kingsbury, too. I mean, he's got this cycle of the beginning of the season, they look good. And everybody gets so super excited about him. And by the end of the year, they've tailed off. And you know, they're like, hey, Kingsbury might get fired sometime. Um, yeah. <laughs> so is the same thing going to happen here? I, I can't be excited to bet a team where Kyler Murray with all the issues in the off season, you know, I mean, this is not a, a team that seems all in to me. Uh, I think the chiefs are, uh, it's just, man, the line's gotten out of control five and a half or six on the chiefs. I can't let, I can't lay that many points with the chiefs, but I'm not excited to bet the Cardinals either. I think I'd pass on that one. I think Hill, man, losing Hill is going to have a huge impact on the sure. Chiefs. You know, yeah. and that's going to be interesting to see how that that works out because that guy was such a freak, you know, that he could make plays that just shouldn't happen happen. You know what I mean? So when Mahomes is scrambling around and just shoot it 80 yards down the field, you know, so I, I don't know how they're going to make up for that. But uh, let me ask you this last question. What in your illustrious career, what's the greatest long shot that you picked? Like the one that no one saw coming. Oh, man, you put me on the spot. Uh, NFL wise or. Yeah, NFL wise. Oh, man, I don't know. I, I don't remember offhand, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I'm not a big futures player, to be honest. So I don't usually bet these before the season. I'm more of a game to game player. Uh, you know, I. I I, I don't, I don't remember. I, I'll, we'll have to, we'll have to revisit that one. But to be honest with you, uh, I did trust the Bengals sooner than anybody else did last year, especially when you got into the playoffs, uh, everybody wanted to doubt the Bengals. So I, I, maybe that was me being a homer. Maybe it was me actually having some good thoughts, but I, I thought the Bengals defense was always underrated last year. I think they still are, but I don't know if there's been any one time where I've had this amazing call on a team all throughout the season in the NFL. I could probably pull up one for, you know, college basketball or some other random sport, but the NFL, I mean, honestly, most of the favorites end up being the ones that win the Super Bowl. Well, the Bengals, I, the, the, I'm pretty sure they covered eight straight last end of the year last year. Yeah. The Bengals, Bengals were on fire at the end of the year. And uh, I, I'll tell you, 
uh, you know, th this is a team that really still isn't getting quite enough respect now, if you're being honest. I mean, whether they're like 22 to one or something to win the, the Super Bowl, not one of the favorites. Uh, so a lot of people are thinking they're going to have a Super Bowl letdown. You know, I, I don't think you have a Super Bowl letdown as much when you're a team that didn't expect to be in the Super Bowl. You know, that's not a team that, you know, the Bengals were supposed to win the Super Bowl or something. They got there you know, Burrow comes back in his first year after getting injured and they have that good of a run. That's what I, I thought too. I think they're still hungry. Yeah, I agree with you. All right, Kyle, let's run around some college football talk, man. What happened with the Bearcats last week? So I'll tell you, you know, the Bearcats played that tough game against Arkansas in basically a road game. Uh, it's a tough SEC opponent. Uh, a few things stand out to me about that game is I know some Bearcats fan will, fans will be a little bit down and out about the fact that they lost that game. It was a close game. They didn't quite cover the spread either, but they were negative one turnover margin. Uh, they, they missed a couple field goals. Special teams were a real issue in that game. You can't have that against a good team. They were also two for eight on 20 plus passing yards, uh, 20 plus yard passing attempts. So if you go back and watch the the clips from that game too, there were tons of wide open receivers deep in that game. Uh, Bryant was not accurate enough. They definitely missed Desmond Ritter there in that first game. Bryant, uh, it's kind of an interesting situation, you know, that he comes back to Cincinnati. I, I don't think that he was good enough in that first game. They took a lot of shots downfield. They had open receivers. They couldn't quite complete them, but look, since he had all those guys go off to the NFL, so many guys drafted, uh, top-end talent, and then they still go and play Arkansas and only, and only lose by a touchdown, even with their issues. So honestly, I think, you know, Fickle's doing a really good job with this program, and I don't think Bearcats fans should be discouraged by that. How long does it take a, a team, a program like Cincinnati, to reach a point like Alabama where they just constantly reload with new Heisman Trophy winners each year? Oh, man. So, I mean, that's going to be hard to reach Alabama's level. <laughs> Alabama's up there by themselves, for sure. Uh, you know, for Cincinnati to reach a, a level where they're going to be as good as last year every year, they, they need a couple recruiting cycles where they get great recruits every single year. Uh, they lost too much from last year. And while they've recruited well, there is a drop off from what they had before. So I don't think we can expect them to be just as good as they were last year immediately. I think we're going to find out more next year, the year after. Uh, you know, I love Fickle as a coach. Uh, he's done a tremendous job. I think, you know, they're such a well-coached team. They could kind of become that, that program that continuously uh, is on the rise. And we know that they're going to be changing conferences. So that's going to be a big deal as well. So I think Cincinnati has a bright future ahead of it. And the fact that they're going to be seen by more recruits being in a bigger conference will help them as well. What do you expect to see from them this week? So, I mean, Cincinnati, there's, there's, there's not much as far as this weekend, you know, is with their, with their matchup. This is a, a game that I wouldn't honestly have any pick on, you know, Kennesaw State against Cincinnati. I, to be honest with you, uh, I'll just say how much I know about Kennesaw State is absolutely nothing. So I know nothing about, I'm always honest and transparent all the time. So I don't want to BS you guys and try to tell you, here's the pick for this weekend. Uh, I think Cincinnati will win uh, handily. Now, are they going to cover any kind of spread? There is no line out right now. They're going to be favored by a ton of points, and they're going to win by a ton of points. All right, which brings us to good old Ohio State. I was chump of the week, and I put money down on Ohio State last week, and they, they broke my heart, and uh, they didn't cover. But they won the game. Was it what it was expected from them this year? Did you think the game was a little too tight with Notre Dame for your liking? Oh, yeah, it was definitely too tight for my liking. Yeah, a hardcore Buckeyes fan. Uh, you know, but did you expect half, them to blow them out, though? Yeah, I expect them to play better in the first half. You know, in the second half, they played pretty well. I was disappointed the passing game really couldn't work. Now, Smith and Jigbo was hurt, and I think he's the best receiver in the country, to be honest. So that's a massive loss. Uh, Marcus Freeman and Notre Dame had a really good game plan also. I think he's a good coach and Notre Dame will do well with him. The frustrating thing to me is the Buckeyes didn't want to run the football. They kept throwing three times, even though it wasn't working. In the second half, finally, they start running the football. The O-line played tremendous. Uh, Mayan Williams was really good. Travion Henderson's a stud. 
I think perception of Ohio State will now be lower than it should be based on so many people were like, man, Ohio State's not very good after that first half. So if anything, it might have been good for Ohio State. Now, it wasn't great for your bet. I'll say that, you know, it sucks to, to lose money. But I don't know that that was that bad of a bet, to be honest with you. I know it lost, but Ohio State didn't play very well at all. And they still won by 11 points. So, you know, I think Notre Dame played about as well as they could have played in that game. Ohio State did not play very well. Uh, and, and look, their defense was tremendous. Ohio State didn't give up a point in the second half. Last year, as a big Buckeyes fan, I know that defense was really bad. I mean, they weren't even mediocre. They've been a bad defense. So Jim Knowles coming in, I think will help them a lot. Uh, I think their offense will get it fixed too. So I'm not terribly worried about the Buckeyes. You think they'll be able to match up with uh, one of the SEC teams? Want to uh, you know, I mean, Bama, Bama and Georgia are the, are the, the ones, obviously. I mean, those are the top three teams by quite a bit. You know, everybody says, well, those are the top three. Who would be the fourth team? Uh, you know, I think Bama is the standard at this point. And, you know, I'm not confident that Ohio State would win a game against Alabama right now. But I, I'd certainly be rooting for them as hard as I could. That's for sure. Well, what about the redemption against Michigan, right? That's the million-dollar question. I. I do expect them to get some redemption against Michigan. And I, I tell you what, I'm really looking forward to that game because I think Ohio State uh, really got punched in the mouth by Michigan last year. Uh, I don't think they're going to let that, that one go as easy as they did last year. I think uh, the Buckeyes will be tougher in the trenches. Uh, I, I think the Buckeyes will be ready to go for that one. And what do you think is going to happen this weekend then? So this weekend, uh, Buckeyes hosting Arkansas State. Uh, the Bet Fred Live line here minus 44 and a half for Ohio State. Uh, it's spread the, the total is 69. So, what a high total as well. Uh, I got to tell you, my son is going to his first Ohio State Buckeyes game here with me for this one. And uh, it's kind of been a running joke. Uh, he's had really bad luck going to Ohio State basketball games. <laughs> They've <laughs> lost three games when they were favored by quite a bit when he's gone with me. So, uh, look, I don't think he's going to be able to find a way to get Arkansas State to win this game. I, you know, one of my friends joked with me, should I take Arkansas State money line? I was like, eh, save your money. You know, let's, let's not do that. But I, I think Ohio State minus 44 and a half, huge, huge number, total of 69. Uh, if I had to bet that game, I'd bet Ohio State and lay the points. I think that they should probably be happy to run up a score now after people thought that they didn't look too good in week one. Oh, man, I think I'm going to – it's redemption time. This whole weekend's <laughs> going to be Ohio State Bengal free money weekend 2022. All right, what about Kentucky versus Florida? Florida giving up six points. So let's go back and say Florida had a great win against uh, Utah last week. I think Utah's a really good team, and Florida with Billy Napier starting there – uh, you know, impressive win for them. Anthony Richardson was tremendous in that offense. Uh, for those of you betting college football, I, I still think Utah is a good team. And I think Utah is a team you could probably make money betting on uh, throughout the rest of the season. Now you've got Kentucky, a team that a lot of people here in the Ohio area would be rooting for here against uh, Florida. Kentucky's had success against Florida in the last few years. And before that, uh, you may remember that really Kentucky hadn't beaten Florida in a long time. It was a really, really long time. And now recently they've, they've had some success here against Florida, especially against the spread. So you go into this one, uh, Florida minus six, a total of 53. Uh, to me, Florida is a much more talented team than Kentucky. And uh, this is not me trying to diss Kentucky. I do like Kentucky. Um, situationally, it's probably a good look for Kentucky because Florida just came off that massive win against Utah, you know, they're probably feeling pretty good about themselves, but Kentucky, yeah, definitely. It may be overconfident. Chris Rodriguez unavailable at running back. Rodriguez is a really good running back. And I think they miss him pretty badly. And also his backups out. So Kentucky's on a third string running back last week against Miami of Ohio, 1.92 yards per carry. And I don't have to tell you, uh, they ought to get more than 1.92 yards per carry against Miami of Ohio. So I don't know if I can really trust them to move the ball enough to uh, to beat Florida here. So uh, I think Florida wins straight up against the spread. I, I don't really have any strong lean there. All right, what about, I did not know that Texas had 
Alabama's number historically. Do you give them any shot against them this weekend? Not, not a good shot at all. I, I, I think Bama's just too good for them. Uh, I, I want to say, you know, first, uh, on ESPN the other night, Joey Galloway said that this line's going to go to 30. So, you know, that was uh, poor information. It's not actually going to go to 30 because the, the spread right now, Bama minus 19 and a half. I think if this thing touches like 21 and a half, everybody's going to bet Texas. A lot of pros are going to bet Texas plus more than three touchdowns. No way this line's going to 30, even though everybody's betting on Bama thus far, 90% of the bets. Um, you know, is this a measuring stick, stick game for Texas? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a tough ask for Texas with a weak offensive line going up against Will Anderson and that tremendous pass rush of Alabama. I have a couple stats that I wanted to throw out here. Um, Alabama has been tremendous when it comes to first half betting. Uh, Alabama 37 and 18 against the spread in their last 55 games in the first half. And, you know, that's really pretty amazing for a team that is such a public darling. I mean, everybody knows Alabama is really good. It's, it's hard for the, the odds makers, uh, you know, because they're always going to want to set a high number on Alabama because everybody's going to bet on that. So the fact that they can't keep up with how good Alabama is in the first half tells you quite a bit to me. And then Alabama in games one through five of the season has been absolute money. Uh, you know, this is a team that you would think you sh shouldn't lay that many points. It's too much. Uh, Alabama has been able to cover really big numbers pretty consistently. Uh, this is a team who has gone 26 and six against the spread in the first five games of the season when the line is 22 and a half or less as them, the favorite. So, you know, 22 and a half is quite a few points, but for Bama, it hasn't been enough. Uh, they, in early in the season, they've been covering these big spreads. If I were betting this game, I would bet Alabama. All right, Kyle, last game we'll touch on Tennessee versus Pittsburgh. Yeah. I mean, Tennessee and Pitt, to me is a really good game here this week because Tennessee is a team I'm pretty high on Pitt coming off that win in the backyard brawl, a big rivalry game, uh, Tennessee uh, Pitt, excuse me, and uh, West Virginia do not like each other at all. That was a really good game for a college football fan. Uh, you know, I was glued to the TV on that one. I really loved uh, that one and being a close finish. We've had some good games in the early going. That was one of them for sure. You know, as far as this, it's a complete clash of styles. Tennessee wants to go as fast as possible. Heupel's all about playing up tempo. Narduzzi wants to run the football, even if they're not very good at running the football. And he wants to stall and play a lower scoring game. You know, on the surface, I have to say, a total set this high at uh, 66 and a half is really just so high for a pit game that I'm tempted to bet an under here. But Tennessee... So fast, so good on offense. Hendon Hooker, I think really scary in this offense. Uh, Keaton Slovis, I think he played well in game one. You know, he takes over for Kenny Pickett. Uh, this is a guy who Slovis was at USC and then, uh, you know, wasn't great at USC the last couple of years. I got to be honest. I mean, he stepped up and played really well in that first game. They just didn't throw it enough. You know, I, they were fortunate to win because they really should have been throwing the football more, but they kept running it right into the line there. So I, I'm curious to see what their split is for runs versus passes here, because to be honest with you, I think they should throw the football a little bit more. I'm curious your thoughts on that. When, when, a, when a quarterback has to come in, when, you know, when a guy is the man, you know, hot shot the program for a few years and just was dominant. Historically, how does the next guy do that comes on in, you know, so if Slovis has to come in for Kenny Pickett, you know, and fill those giant shoes or filling in for Ritter, how do those guys perform? Yeah, I mean, well, Slovis in this case did amazing. I mean, 16 for 24, uh, you know, 66 and a half percent completions and then 308 yards and a touchdown, no interceptions. Like I said, they just didn't really give him enough chances. Uh, ben Bryant. Uh, uh, replacing Ritter, you know, I, I, I think he was kind of mixed case. Like I said, you know, he missed a lot of wide open receivers deep. Uh, 43 pass attempts surprised me a bit from UC. Uh, the fact that they threw that many, I mean, 325 yards, but that's not terribly efficient when you're throwing it uh, 43 times. So those two guys were uh, kind of a mixed bag. And I would say in general, 
to be honest with you, I think it's, it's a coach dependent thing and how, what kind of depth you have. Some coaches will try to protect that next starter. Uh, we've seen guys where it didn't really work out. We've seen other guys where they step right in. I mean, Alabama, they're just like a factory, you know, they go from one guy to the next and, you know, they get rid of uh, Mac Jones and Br Bryce Young comes in and Bryce Young's probably better than Mac Jones. So, uh, you know, this is, it's not the same way everywhere. Uh, as a handicapper, I usually try to stay away from that first game or two and watch and learn because, you know, you don't have to bet every game. I always tell everybody, you know, just because it's on your TV, you don't have to bet that game. Uh, we don't need uh, degenerate action all the time. So uh, we'll, we'll try to, you know, I mean, if you want a little bit of action, you know, whether it be you know, some kind of pizza money or beer money or something like that, but don't, don't go putting uh, a ton of money on something that you're, you don't really know that much about. I, I, One, two, three, let's go. It's time for three picks that have nothing to do with Ohio sports. I'm going to tell you my three that I'm, I'm going to be doubling Junior's College Fund on here, all right? I'm taking the Cardinals and the points. I think the Chiefs are going to have a letdown. Not a letdown. I think there's going to be more of an adjustment than they're going to – than they'd like to believe, all right? Lions. I'm going to take the Lions and the points, the three and a half to four. I think Lion DC mania, everyone's going crazy, hard knocks. Campbell's got everyone fired up. They're going to be at home. They they are dying in Detroit to turn things around so bad. They're going crazy, man. So that guy will rip someone's head off if they don't cover the spread out there. And then uh, I'm going to Chicago Bears in an ugly game. The under, Bears 49ers taking the under on that game. The, the Those are my three faves for the week. What are you liking? Yeah, so for, for my non-Ohio plays here, staying completely away from the state, I, I'm going to go with uh, number one. I'm going to take Air Force minus 18 against Colorado here in college football. I think Colorado is just a terrible team. Air Force ran for 582 yards last week. I mean, 582 yards on the ground alone against who's Northern their, Iowa. Who's their beast running back? Or the well, I mean, they, Hazik Daniels, their, their quarterback, is probably their best player. I mean, running that triple option, he, he's probably the best. But they, they, they're they really deep. They have a ton of good fullbacks, running backs. That triple option is really uh, tough to stop. But, I mean, no, I know it was Northern Iowa, but Northern Iowa is a pretty good FCS team. So I still think that was pretty impressive. Uh, I think that if you look at Colorado, Colorado dead last in rushing defense at PFF. This is a team that just got trounced by TCU, a rushing offense that's not nearly as good as Air Force. I think this is a one-sided game in favor of the Falcons. So I'm going to take that for my first one. My second one, I am going to take another college game. I'm going to take Baylor and BYU over the total. Um, I see 53 or 53 and a half here. Uh, so I'll take over either of those numbers. I uh, will say 53 and a half to take the worst line. I don't want to be trying to, to, to turn anything uh, here, but uh, over 53 and a half for uh, Baylor and uh, BYU here at BYU. I think BYU's passing attack can be good enough to beat a Baylor secondary that's not tremendous. And BYU gets everybody back from last year. And it's funny because you hear everybody say, oh, BYU returns all 11 starters on defense from last year. Yeah, but they weren't very good. You know, so is that actually a good thing or not? You know, you return everybody that wasn't very good. I'm not that excited about it. So uh, I, I think, yeah, I think 53 and a half is a little bit too low for that game. And then the final one, and Bengals Genius, I think you're going to appreciate this one. This is a NFL two-team, six-point teaser. Uh, now, I will say, don't tease anything other than the NFL. I, I get questions with people saying, you know, I want to tease college basketball or some sport with a ton of variance. But teasers in the NFL can work, done well on these in the long term. Maybe this is something we can talk about going forward, too. NFL teasers having some solid value. I'm going to tease – the Vikings up by six points. So I'll take the Vikings up from one and a half up to seven and a half and get them through the key numbers of three and seven. So if they lose by seven or less, that side of it's good. The second team I'm going to take here is the Ravens against the Jets. I'm going to take the Ravens down from negative seven to a minus one. Look, Flacco's really bad. I expect the Ravens to be very good. 
same thing from you, obviously, based on what you said earlier. And as far as the other game, I, I think the Packers are good, but I think the Vikings are a pretty deep team. And at home, uh, getting uh, north of a touchdown, I think, is a pretty good look there. So that's my three plays here for this week. All right, man. Well, it's great meeting you. I'm glad we're teaming up for the Cincy Corner. I cannot wait to get the whole season going, and I'm fired up for Sunday. I know you're fired up for Saturday, so – Let's go, man. I'm excited. Let's do it. I'm excited. Great to have this thing started off.